Hello friends, welcome to Sidza.com. Now in this video we will learn about uh, the limiting reagent. What is a limiting reagent? The reactant that gets exhausted first during a chemical reaction and limits the reaction is called the limiting reagent. Another reagent is called excess reagent, right? So what is the excess reagent? The reactant which the reactants which are left at the end of a reaction they're called as excess reagents to understand the limiting reagent let's have a look at this balanced chemical equation normally whenever you write a chemical reaction we try to balance it like here we have a sulfur dioxide it reacts with oxygen and forms the sulfur trioxide and when you balance it we need two moles of SO2 with one mole of oxygen and form two moles of SO3. So this is a balanced chemical equation. Why we balance it? We balance because from a balanced chemical equation, we get the information, the ratio in which the reactants combine, right? So like here, from this balanced chemical equation, two moles of sulfur dioxide will react with the one mole of oxygen. Okay, so therefore the molar ratio between the SO2 and the O2 is 2 is to 1, right? That means if you take 2 moles of SO2, you have to take 1 mole of oxygen. So the ratio in which these reactants combine is 2 is to 1. And when 2 moles of SO2 react with 1 mole of oxygen, we get 2 moles of sulfur trioxide. If we react to the same components but in a different ratio suppose if I take here rather than two moles of SO2 if I take it four moles of SO2 then obviously I have to take how much of how many moles of oxygen I have to double it also right so I should take it two moles so that means if I react to the SO2 and the oxygen in four to two moles what will I get at the end I'll get 4 moles of SO3. Now in both the cases, the ratio is same, right? The simplest whole number ratio is same here between the reactors. SO2 and O2, it is 2 is to 1. And here also, it will be 4 by 2, it is again the 2 by 1. So when the reactants combine in a ratio that you find here in the balanced chemical equation, at the end of a reaction, you will only get the product. So there will be nothing, you know, uh, nothing more left. However, if you react to the reactants in a different ratio, not the ratio in which, you know, we find them in a balanced chemical equation. So if, for example, if I react to the, here, SO2, 4 moles, and rather than taking oxygen 2 moles, I take it 3 moles. Now how much of the product will be formed? Okay. The amount of the product that you get here depends on the limiting reagent. So we have to first check which is the limiting reagent in a chemical reaction. Now this ratio is not the same, right? That you find in the able to experiments here. The third ratio is different here. We are reacting the reactants in a different ratio than what we find from the balanced chemical equation. Right? So here SO2 is 4 moles. Oxygen we should have only 2 moles, but we are taking it 3 moles. That means oxygen is in excess, it's more than what, you, what we require here. We only require 2 moles, but we are taking 3. So that means here oxygen will be the excess. Means it will be left at the end of a reaction. So sulfur dioxide will be the limiting reagent here because it will be consumed first. And when all the sulfur dioxide is consumed during the reaction here, out of the 3 moles of O2, only 2 moles of oxygen will react and 1 mole of oxygen will be there left unreacted. So that means oxygen is the excess here in this experiment, right? And sulfur dioxide here is the limiting reagent. So now, limiting reagent we can conclude is the reactant that gets exhausted first during a chemical reaction and the other reactant is a excess reagent. So when 
a reaction occurs the component that first consumes completely it gets exhausted there that is called as the limiting reagent and the amount of product you know how much of this product you get right again depends on the limiting reagent i'll repeat it the amount of the product you know how many moles of so3 you get it depends on what it depends on the limiting reagent so let's understand it with an example right so this is a balanced equation a plus b it gives the c and d the balanced equation is we require three moles of a and six moles of b so that means the, the the ratio in which the reactants actually combine is three to six here right it is three to six three moles of a and six moles of b but if i react the a and the b the reactants if i react the you know mix them in a different ratio not in three to six ratio if i react them in nine is to 27 moles ratio you know this is the nine moles of a and 27 moles of b so now I, I need to find the limiting reagent in this experiment, right? If I react here, suppose A and B, I mix 9 moles of A with the 27 moles of B. So how much product is formed and which is the limiting reagent first? Let's find, you know, find first the limiting reagent. So how we do it actually? You know, how to find the limiting reagent? We can compare the ratios here, right? Okay. We can compare the ratios from the balanced ratio, from the balanced equation ratio, right? From the balanced equation ratio. The ratio there is between A and the B. The, re the ratio between the reactants is 3 by 6 here. And that is 0 0.5, right? Now, in our experiment here, what is the ratio here in which the reactants combine? The ratio here in my experiment I find is 9 by 27, right? It is 9 by 27. So when I solve here this, it will be 0 0.333, right? The ratio here is 0 0.333. If you compare this ratio with the balanced equation ratio, we find the ratio is less, okay? It's not equal to 0 0.5. It's not the similar ratio that we find in the balanced equation. Now see, there are there can be actually the three situations can arise. Either this ratio, the experimental ratio, will be equal to the balanced equation ratio. Then it means there is no limiting reagent. Everything is in proportion. But the ratio, it can be more than this or it can be less than this. Less than the balanced equation ratio. In that case, we have to find the limiting reagent. So here in this experiment, the ratio is less than 0 0.5 it means that a component is less and the b is more right a is less b is more that's why the ratio is less than 0 0.5 okay it's less than 0 0.5 because a is less so that means a will be the limiting reagent and b here will be the excess reagent okay so here in this experiment a is the limiting reagent and B is the excess reagent. Now suppose if I react the same A and the B in a different ratio. Say for example, if I react the two, the two components here in 9 is to 12, if A you take 9 moles and B you take 12 moles. So what will be the ratio then? A by B ratio here will be it is 9 by 12, right? It is 9 by 12. So when you solve here this, it will be 0 0.75. That means this ratio is more than 0 0.5, isn't it? It's more than the balanced equation ratio. So if it's more than the balanced equation ratio, that means A is more and the B is less. So that means A is the excess reagent here and B will be the limiting reagent, right? So here in this experiment, the limiting reagent is B and the excess reagent will be A. Now let's take some other examples. See the balanced equation ratio is here 
2 is to 1, right? 2 moles of hydrogen reacts with 1 mole of oxygen and you get 2 moles of water, right? This is the balanced equation ratio. So the ratio between the hydrogen and the oxygen will be, it is 2 by 1, which is 2.02, right? So this is the balanced equation ratio. But when you react to the hydrogen and the oxygen, in 3 is to 6 ratio, right? So here, the, our experimental ratio is what? It is 3 moles of hydrogen. We react to the 3 moles of hydrogen with the 6 moles of oxygen, right? So that means our ratio will be, hydrogen and oxygen ratio will be, it is 3 by 6, which is 0 0.5, right? So this ratio here is less than 2.0, isn't it? It's less than 2.0, okay? So it's less because hydrogen is less. That means hydrogen will be the limiting reagent, okay? If suppose here the ratio comes out 2.5 rather than 0 0.5, if it is 2.5, then in that case, oxygen will be the limiting reagent, right? So that means here, hydrogen is the limiting reagent and oxygen is the excess reagent, right? Fine. So let's see, let's calculate the amount of the product. As I said earlier, the amount of the product that is formed depends on the limiting reagent, right? So we can see here, the amount of the product depends on, depends on the limiting reagent, right? So hydrogen here is the limiting reagent and we need to find what amount of the water will be formed. So from the balanced equation, what we find here, that two moles of hydrogen produce two moles of water. So I can write the relation between the limiting reagent and the product like this, you know, two moles of hydrogen, it produces two moles of water, right? Because hydrogen is the limiting reagent here. I will relate the limiting reagent with the product, right? So two moles of hydrogen from, you know, uh, you get two moles of water. So therefore the ratio is one is to one, right? For one mole of hydrogen, how much you get water? One mole of hydrogen. So therefore, for the three moles of hydrogen, you get three moles of water, right? Okay, this is the answer. And now let's find how much of the excess reagent was consumed, right? How much of the excess reagent was consumed? We got the six moles of oxygen, but it is excess. We don't need, you know, uh, the, all the six moles of oxygen here in this reaction. Only few moles of oxygen get consumed because it is in excess, right? So some amount of oxygen is left there, unreacted reagent. So if you want to calculate how much of oxygen is consumed out of six moles, so that, that again we will relate with the limiting reagent, right? So limiting reagent is the key player here in the reaction. So from the balanced equation, we get the two moles of hydrogen, which is actually a li limiting reagent, will react with the one mole of oxygen, right? only one mole of oxygen, okay? So therefore, one mole of a hydrogen will react with how many moles of oxygen? One by two moles of oxygen, right? And in our experiment, how much is the limiting reagent there? Three moles. Therefore, for the three moles of hydrogen, you get how much? Three by two moles of oxygen, right? That is, 1.5 moles, right? 1.5 moles of oxygen is consumed. So out of the 6 moles of, out of the 6 moles of oxygen, only 1.5 moles of oxygen is consumed and the amount of oxygen left will be amount of oxygen left will be equal to 6 minus 1.5 which is equal to 4.5 moles of oxygen. That means 
at the end of a reaction you will get 3 moles of water and 4.5 moles of oxygen only right let's take a one more example to understand it completely suppose we have a reaction the carbon reacts with the oxygen and forms carbon monoxide and the reaction is being carried out by taking 24 grams of the carbon with the 96 grams of oxygen okay with the 96 grams of the oxygen so again when you look at the balanced equation we got the ratio 2 is to 1 2 moles of carbon reacts with the 1 mole of oxygen and you get 2 moles of carbon monoxide the product this is the molar ratio so let me take here the weight ratio first because we got the reactants here in the in the grams so I'll find the weight ratio of this particular reaction 2 moles of carbon and 1 mole of an oxygen in terms of weight 2 moles of carbon will be how many grams it will be 24 because you know this is 2 into 12 right 2 into 12 okay so that means 24 grams of carbon right and one mole of oxygen in terms of grams means how much that is 32 grams right okay and how much of carbon monoxide you get 2 times 28 which is equal to 56 grams right so that means the ratio here is 24 grams of carbon directed with the 34 32 grams of the oxygen and you get 56 grams of carbon monoxide if you look at here the total weight of the reactants is 24 plus 32 that is again the 56 and here you again get the product total weight 56 right so 56 grams of the reactant and 56 grams of the products so this is the law of conservation of mass also right so from the balance of the chemical equation it takes 24 grams of carbon to react with the 32 grams of oxygen so therefore the ratio between the carbon and oxygen will be 24 by 32 right so 24 by 32 that is equal to 0 0.75 right that is the 0 0.75 this is the weight ratio here and in our experiment here we are taking 24 grams of the carbon right 24 grams of the carbon and react with the 96 grams of oxygen right so the ratio here in our experimental you know uh, in our experiment the ratio is carbon and oxygen the ratio is what 24 by 96 right 24 by 96 so the ratio is 0 0.25 and this ratio the experimental ratio is much less than the balanced chemical equation ratio that means the ratio is less which means the carbon is less so therefore the carbon will be the limiting reagent right and oxygen here will be the excess reagent right oxygen is the excess reagent so we got we found we found the limiting reagent carbon here is the limiting reagent right okay carbon is the limiting reagent so amount of the product formed here again as I told you previously it depends on the depends on the limiting reagent right okay so let's find how much of the product will be formed from the balanced chemical equation I'll relate the limiting reagent with the product so 2 gram 2 moles of carbon here produce 2 moles of carbon monoxide so in terms of weight actually 2 moles of carbon means 24 grams of carbon right the carbon is 24 grams and, and it, it forms 56 grams of carbon monoxide right carbon here is the limiting reagent so that means 24 grams of carbon produce 56 grams of carbon monoxide here the product is carbon monoxide now let's take another experiment if I suppose react rather than 24 grams of carbon if I react only 12 grams of the carbon with the same amount of oxygen right okay 12 grams of the carbon with 96 grams of oxygen okay 12 grams of carbon reacts with the 96 grams of oxygen how much of the product will be formed so again we will check the limiting reagent first right 
So the ratio between the carbon and oxygen here is 12 by 96, right? 12 by 96. And 12 by 96 will be equal to 0 0.125. Again, when you relate it with the balanced chemical equation ratio here, it is less than 0 0.5. That means carbon is the limiting reagent, right? And oxygen will be the excess reagent. And again here, if you want to find the you know, amount of product formed here, I'll again relate the limiting reagent with the product. So from here, from the balanced equation, we get that 24 grams of carbon produces 56 grams of carbon monoxide, right? So that means 24 grams of carbon will be equal to 56 grams of carbon monoxide, right? Okay, will be equal to carbon monoxide. So for the one gram, therefore, you know, when you, when you check it for the one gram of a carbon, it will be 56 by 24 grams of carbon monoxide. And I need to check it for 12 grams, right? So therefore, for the 12 grams, it will be, from 12 grams of the carbon, you get how much? 56 by 24 times 12, right? Okay, that will be equal to 28 grams of carbon monoxide, right? So that means from 12 grams of carbon, you will get 28 grams of carbon monoxide. So everything now here depends on the limiting reagent. So the, therefore the limiting reagent is the key point here. Hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.